Good morning, everyone. It's Brenda Quintana here. I'm sorry I'm off to a late start this morning. I had a car designed for today, last night, and then this morning I woke up and I wanted to change it. So I actually didn't totally change the card. I just kind of changed the colors of the layers around a bit. And so, yes, I got delayed because then I remade my card. I had to rephotograph it and I had to blog it and all of that sort of stuff. So, so sorry I'm late. Um, I try to be on time, but um, sometimes when you make something really special, it takes a little longer. And I really love today's card because uh, it's Casing Tuesday, but I actually did a fancy fold card for this card. And I think you're gonna really love it. It's kind of fun, playful, and I think whoever gets it is going to love it. So um, I'm gonna show you first of all um, the Casing Tuesday part because uh, it is that day. And um, if you're not already part of our group, um, check down below in um, the description of this video, there's a link to our group and you can share your card that you make based on the sketch um, and um, you can be part of our little community there so let me find today's card I think there it is there is today's card and it's kind of got a big a focal point layer right in the center um, and those trees are just beautiful but I don't have that stamp set and I kind of wanted to do a little something more with this piece and there's kind of a layer peeking out behind it. Um, and here is the, oh, here is the sketch. So you can kind of see how you would put your card together. And I think this is a fabulous sketch and it's really easy to do. Um, but when I, when I looked at it, I just wanted to turn it into a fancy full card. And so I went with that. So my big layer in the center is actually going to be a swing layer. So let me come over here. I'll show you my card. I'm gonna hold it up. So this is the open card. So this is what reminds me of the original card, a big uh, layer in the center, but it actually folds down um, smaller. So it's like, um, this is how it folds down. And so it's actually the open portion that looks like the sketch to me. So there it is, I love this. A merry hello, and then be jolly so much fun. I love cards like this. So let me show you how I'm going to make this. So let me switch over to my other camera, which I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope is working today. Oh, and I need to bring up my comments window. Oh, good. Okay. I have someone here. Yay. <laughs> That's, it's kind of a relief to me because I am that disorganized this morning. Okay, so let me switch over and good morning, D. good morning, Cindy. I'm gonna switch over to my other camera so I can show you this card. All right, so um, I'm using the Bee Jolly stamp set from the holiday catalog and also the Candy Canes stamp set. And I have used the Bee Jolly um, stamp set with my team, but um, I actually hadn't posted any samples with it, so I'm happy to finally be using this stamp set. And the candy canes are so much fun. As you can see here, you know, you stamp them in red and white and they just have a lot of fun energy on a card. And it just really goes well with the Santa Claus images. So I'm gonna show you how I put everything together. So let's start off with our piece of cardstock. And um, this piece measures six and three quarters by five and a half. And I also have these measurements on my blog in case you want to um, check them because um, this is, I would call this a, at least uh, like an intermediate to an advanced card um, just because of the cutting and scoring. But if you can follow along those um, things, then you'll be absolutely fine. I just want to kind of let you know that. I'm going to use my Stamparatus to stamp the candy canes because these are actually, this piece is going to need to be stamped twice to get um, the coverage. So I've already set this up and what I did is I took a piece of um, that grid paper, um, that um, Stamparatus grid paper, and I put it down here 
and I'm going to shove my piece all the way to the end here and then I've lined it up with this bottom line and what I did the first time is I took my time and I took this stamp and I lined it up so it was hovering over this end right here and um, then I picked it up and so we're first we're going to stamp this side so I'll take my real red ink pad and I'm just gonna do a really good job of pouncing on here the one thing if you want to make sure your piece is anchored a little bit what I did is I took a little bit of the stamp and seal just a little bit uh, and I put a little line on there and then I took the my shirt and I kind of daubed it on there got some lint off of my shirt and so now there's a little sticky spot right there so it's not going to hurt your cardstock but it's going to keep your uh, piece in place so when you're doing your stamping um, and if you don't do a good job you can come back and ink it up and, and do it again so just pounce on there get that stamp this is real red ink and then we're going to come over here and we're gonna press down and I have the smooth side up um, there's a, a grid side and a smooth side I like to have the smooth side down so I can like really uh, push down and I I put my shirt over my um, my palm here so it just it's really easy and look at that that is a nicely stamped image and this stamp is just right at five and a half inches so it really helps to have the stamp apparatus okay so now I'm going to peel this up and I'm going to move this over after you have stamped this the first time you're going to be able to see where you lined it up um, but the first time I did this I just looked where this was and I looked where um, this was and I just kind of lined it up like that but now I'm going to actually use right here because you can see where my um, stamp landed make sure it's lined up with this bottom line right here press down there's still a little adhesive right there and now I can just go ahead and ink this up I don't need to ink all the way to the edge here because there's about that much that needs to be inked so if I just get most of this side inked up I should be good all right let's test it out and see okay it looks like it's going to be aligned well and then I'm going to again just kind of give this a nice little rub and I like to do the stamping first because it does a better um, job okay that looks pretty good it does a better job um, now than once you cut into it because once you cut into it then um, the paper um, uh, some sometimes the candy canes won't stamp nice and flat over the paper okay so we can put this aside and my little thing is buzzing okay I am so late this morning that my Instacart shopper is shopping for me <laughs> let's hope she finds everything I got so used to using Instacart over um, the pandemic that now even though I feel safe shopping in a grocery store it's like one thing I just don't want to do some people have house cleaners I don't have a house cleaner but I do actually use Instacart and I only shop once a week now most of the time um, and I think it saves me money because I'm not constantly running to the store because I have to make a list and stick to it. Okay, let me grab my instructions. I am so disorganized this morning. Okay, I need these instructions because otherwise I will make a mess. Okay, so I have the six and three quarter inch side up at the top and I'm going to line up at the five and a half inch mark. So six and three quarter inch side up at the top line up here five and a half inch mark we're going to um, cut make a cut but not all the way through we're gonna start here and move to here so I'm just lifting this up moving it to the one and a quarter inch mark 
and I'm going to score from one, uh, not score, cut from one and a quarter to four and a quarter. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do it on the white side because you're going to see that a little bit better. Let's do that. Okay, so I'm going to line up at the five and a half inch mark again. We're going to cut from one and a quarter to to four and a quarter. Yep. Okay. I thought I got that measurement wrong. One and a quarter to four and a quarter. Then we're going to turn this 180. So we cut this side. We're going to line it up at the five and a half inch mark again. And we're going to do the same cut. One and a quarter to four and a quarter. All right. Then we're going to turn this to the shorter side, the five and a half inch side. And this time I'm going to line up at the four and a quarter inch mark. And I'm going to score, I'm going to do two cuts on each of this side. So I'm going to score from, not score, cut from two and three quarter inches. Sorry, from one and a quarter inches to two and three quarter inches. And then lift this up and I'm going to do from four inches to five and a half inches. I have done a swing card tutorial before and what I'll do after I'm done here, I'm gonna post that video because I think I did that one in a really clear and concise manner and I think that will really help you if you wanna master this full. Now I'm going to turn this card 180 degrees again. So I cut this side with two cuts. Now I'm gonna do the same measurements on the other side. So I'm going to line up at, let me find my mark, line up at four and a quarter, four and a quarter, score, not score, cut from one and a quarter down to two and three quarters. And so I'm using this ruler right here. Lift this up and move my thing over to the four inch mark right here and then cut down to the five and a half inch mark. Okay, so I've kind of made cuts that look like this, okay? And this center section is um, not cut at all. All right, now we're gonna do some scoring. So move that cutting blade out of the way and forget that it exists and we're just gonna score this time. Now we're working on the long side, the six and three quarter inch side again. We're gonna line up at the two and three quarter inch mark, right here, sorry, right here, two and three quarters. We're gonna use our scoring blade and we're gonna start right here where the cut line is. So that would be at the one and a quarter inch mark and we're going to go from there out to the end. So one and a quarter back to zero then lift this up and we're gonna go from four and a quarter out to the end, okay? So this is what it looks like. We're not scoring this middle section, we're scoring the outside pieces. Then we're gonna slide this cardstock over to the four inch mark. So it was at two and three quarters, now we're sliding it over to four and we're going to score from one and a quarter out to zero lift this up start at four and a quarter and all the way off your cardstock so that's what it looks like two score lines in the middle and then cut lines right here okay I hope you're still with me so now when we flip this over we have this beautiful candy cane um, design and I want to just so right here I want to show you there's a little bit of like overlap where the candy canes kind of um, came together. So I want that right here on, on this piece right here because um, that is going to be less noticeable right here because it's not noticeable on the front. So we're going to the place where the overlap of the candy canes, if you stamped it that way, I'm going to fold that forward like this. And you can use your little bone folder like that, okay? And then um, the other one we're going to fold in the opposite direction, okay? So like this. 
All right. So if you wanted to, you could stamp directly on here and, and then you'd have to create a layer right here to um, stamp on here, a flat layer. But I'm going to create layers for both of these sides because I want to frame them up just a little bit. But there you've already built your little um, fancy fold card piece. So now it's just about the decorating. So I'm going to take two pieces of cardstock and these ones measure four inches by two and three quarter inches. Let me just double check that. See if my brain's working. Yes, four by two and three quarters. Okay, this one for the front and one for the back. And then we're going to go ahead and stamp some of these images. One little thing with this image right here, and what I'll do is I'll take this layer is four and a quarter, I've got two of these here, uh, real red. They are four and a quarter by three inches. This is just a little bit under three inches to fit in here a little better. I'm gonna line this up right here. I'm gonna take my piece right here, my white piece, and I'm going to line it up where, um, where it's going to go, okay? The reason I want to do this, I'm going to take a little pencil mark right here and I'm going to put it right here. So I know this is kind of, this is a rectangle piece, but only when the card is flat, only this part's going to show. So you want to make sure your image is not kind of cut off funny. So that's why the little pencil mark will be there. So just to help remind me where I need to stamp everything. Okay. So let's go ahead and stamp. And there's two Santas. One is kind of standing and the other one is dancing. So we're this is first we're going to do the one for the outside, the card front. And I want this Santa, I've got my pencil mark here. I want the Santa kind of his boot is very close to that pencil mark. I'll show you in just one second. See the pencil mark? It's very, very close. Okay, so the Santa hand is probably going to be tucked under a little bit, but that's okay. Um, I want to have enough room to stamp a merry hello. And this uh, greeting came with the stamp set, and um, I cut it in between merry and hello, and I stacked them because um, it wouldn't have fit on here properly otherwise. So I'm just going to go ahead and stamp that right next to my Santa. All right, so that's the front, and let's do the inside, or the back side, because it's a swing card. It doesn't really have an inside. This is kind of a different sort of card. I think, I don't know, I think this would be a great card to give like grandchildren and um, young, young people, because it's really fun. So I'm going to stamp, this is the Dancing Santa, and I'm going to stamp him right about here, okay? And then I'm going to take the greeting, Be Jolly, which I think is really cute, a merry hello, and then Be Jolly, and I'm going to stamp that right about there. And then this little bird was just so cute, I had to add him on here. And I thought he'd look good just on that Santa hand right there. So that will be the back side of the card. And this was um, Tuxedo Memento black ink. It is my favorite black ink. So if you're looking for a black ink, I this this is the one that I recommend. And this is probably one of the colors we've had the longest. It's not the longest running color. I think Native Navy is that um, color, but real red is a real solid, nice Christmas red. Absolutely recommend it as well. Okay, so now we need to do some coloring. So I've got my Stampin' Blends right here, and I'm going to be using Real Red Dark, Daffodil Delight Dark, um, Crumb Cake, just the light. Uh, petal pink dark and basic black light they come in a set of two so you'll get a light and a dark I just wanted to kind of tell you what um, 
the darks and the lights that I'm using. So let's start off with, we're gonna color both of these at the same time. Let's start off with the Real Red Dark and we're gonna do the Santa suit. And I'm just gonna come along and color the sky. These Stampin' Blend markers are so bright and wonderful, especially for Christmas. They are just a wonderful color. I'm using the bullet tip because this is a really small kind of area and it's just easier to get in there. Do the Santa hat and I'm just leaving the white space which would be the, you know, the tassel or the little ball on the end of the Santa hat and the fur trim. Um, and then I'll come in here just under the beard and just hit there's a little bit of the red suit there. And then I'll do a little bit of the sleeve here. Okay, I think I've got all the red for this one. Let's switch over to the other Santa. It's easier kind of if you have your red out to just do both of them at the same time. How is everyone today? Are you guys all doing okay? I hope you are. The sun is shining here, and uh, I think what I'm gonna do after this is my craft room needs a real cleanup. It is like really, really in a bad shape. And this morning when I walked in here, I was kind of in a bad mood. <laughs> and my card wasn't quite the way I wanted it, and I switched it up, and then my room's kind of messy. And that just kind of put me in a really bad mood. So I think I need to reset. I think I need to take the time and just fix my room so that I'm not like all cranky. Okay, what about you? Are your rooms messy right now? Are you busy preparing for Christmas and Thanksgiving? And uh, I think this time of year we get a little stressed out because we're trying to do a lot. And there's a lot of pressure to you know, be one thing or be another thing. And, you know, sometimes um, if you're a woman, you feel all this pressure to like be perfect, but we just need to be kind to ourselves. Sometimes we need to do a reset day. Okay, so I've got all the uh, red on there. Let's go ahead and do the Santa's face. I'm gonna use petal pink. Uh, please use whatever skin tone you want. Um, I'm sure Santa is not just um, uh, petal pink colored. Um, I'm sure there are um, uh, Santas with different skin colors. So go ahead and use a skin color that makes you happy. Um, we've got a lot of kind of um, tans and browns and, and yellows. Um, choose what color. Or maybe your Santa is a Grinch. You know, maybe that's how you're feeling today. Use whatever whatever color makes you happy. I'm gonna hit the little ears too. All right. So now we're gonna do um, basic black for the boots. And this is the light basic black. It is actually pretty dark anyway it kind of obliterates the lines. So I'm just coming in here and I'll do the little black on the boots. I debated whether or not to do black gloves, but I ended up just leaving them white. You can choose, you can do your, the gloves as black as well. I just thought that's just one less thing I need to color. Okay. Oh, and the belt, I forgot about the belt. So come in, I think the belt is probably most likely black on a Santa. And I'm just gonna do the center of the belt too. And I'll do the belt on this guy here. I know this is gonna take a little while to color, but I think it's kind of worth it just to show you how I did it. I didn't do any shading with this. It's just kind of really bold red coloring. Then I'll come in and I'll do the belt bullet tip. Oh, I've missed the center of that belt. I'll have to come back. Let's do the belt buckle. And also I'm gonna do the bird beacon yellow. It looks kind of 
It looks a little bit orangey if, um, if that's kind of what you're expecting anyway, but that way I don't have to bring in another color. I can just kind of go with yellow. And some birds do have yellow beaks, so that works out. And then the little bird, oh, and I forgot the little red hat on the bird, but I'm gonna do the little bird in crumb cake. I debated whether or not to do him in a, like a bright color, like a yellow or a blue or maybe even red, but then I decided there's a lot of red on this card. So I kind of went a little bit neutral with the bird and then I just did his little part of his hat. It just needs to kind of be red. Isn't that cute? Like I really feel like that's cute. Let me just erase my little pencil mark there. All right, so I told you that these were four by two and three quarters. So we're gonna put these on four and a quarter by three pieces of real red. So they're both identical size pieces that keeps it easy and then we'll just layer this on here this one's for the back of the card and this one's for the front of the card see how the stampin blends they bleed right through the card so you want to try and minimize the times when you're going to have a back of a layer like that exposed because it doesn't look good. Doesn't that look just so crisp and, and clean? These Stampin' Blends just do a phenomenal job and I didn't even, I didn't even shade. I know it's, some people would say, oh, you need to shade, but for this, I think it's just nice to be just bright and bold. Okay, so this one's going to slide in here. So you can kind of see his hands just a little bit off, but I think it looks looks good. It makes me happy. So let's put some Tombow on here. And then I'm just gonna slide this in here and just add this. Oh, it looks so good. And then Flip to the back side. This looks kind of crazy, doesn't it? Too many candy canes, but we're gonna put that right on the center layer right here. And as I said before, try out your layers beforehand. Make sure that they work, like especially the, the, the bigger layer, the real red layer. Make sure it fits before you, um, before you go ahead and put glue on it, like just um, make sure this um, three inch, if you cut it just a little bit less than three inch, it's going to um, work just a little bit better because at three inches, you're you're gonna maybe be rubbing on, on the other part of the card. So much fun. All right, so then I'm just gonna take a little piece. I have a little scrap piece of this left over. This is the Real Red on the back it says sheer ribbon this is the ribbon that i'm using the most this christmas it ties so nicely if you need a real red ribbon get this one this is my favorite one um 153535 is this real ribbon it's also on my supply list um you will love this ribbon it's just awesome to tie so um, i'm just going to tie this a little bit of ribbon down here just just to make it look good. And then, you know, locking tweezers are always a good thing to work with if you can find them. All right, lock tweezers right there. And then, come on. All right. And that just adds just a little bit of Fun to your card and it's really easy to tie that onto a card because it's tied on you don't have to adhere it on and then you just do a little snip and another little snip and there we go there is the card you could also add a little bit of bling on this card if you wanted to um, some rhinestones or whatever oh, it's so fun all right, so this is what it looks like on the front, and this is what it looks like when it's swung open to the back. It looks kind of fun when you stand it up, you know, because it's got, you know, some some action to it. 
Um, oh, I wanted to show you, this was the card that I first did because I kind of wanted a, a darker card base. So you could definitely do that. I stamped the candy canes on here too, but this morning they look so washed out that I don't, I didn't really think it did the card justice to do it this way. But just so you can see here and here, you could also do a real red card base. And this is um, the glittered um, basic black ribbon um, as an alternative. Um, when I put the real red ribbon on here, it looked also really washed out too much red. So, you know, you could definitely, you know, if you wanted to, you could do the card in real red, but I think the real charm is in the candy canes. Definitely use a Stamparatus if you have one to create the background because it's just so much easier to use a Stamparatus to create this. Um, you'll see right here on the crease, uh, my candy canes aren't 100% perfect, but because I kept it on the inside piece of the card, the main part of this is covered by a focal point layer. If I didn't sit here and point this out to you, you would not notice it. So if you're stamping it and you're trying to be too much of a perfectionist here, don't be because no one's going to notice this. It's a very busy pattern. So people don't really look at any one candy cane. You know, so just don't let that bother you at all. It's it, the overall pattern is really what is going to shine. And since this is in a crease, it's it's not going to make a big difference. I just wanted to point it out for you perfectionists out there. Don't be perfectionist about that. All right. So what did you think? Let me come back over here. That is my very late candy cane Santa swing card. <laughs> crazy right good morning I see some more of you popped on here um hello to Ellie Ellie emailed me this morning she goes Brenda I can't find you and I'm like I'm late I'm sorry my e email was so short to you uh Ellie I was just trying to get stuff done so I'm like I'm late sorry um so anyway yes I and I'm so happy that you care that I wasn't here on time because that makes me know that you want me to be on here on Tuesdays. Just know that um, normally I will try and get in on here between 10 and 11, usually at 10. I'm sorry I was late today. Have I apologized yet? Am I Canadian enough? <laughs> Canadians like to apologize. Okay. All right. Okay. Janine says, I had to shovel through my room the other day. It's not perfect, but it's far better than it was. I just need more flat surface. I know today I am going to tidy up in here. It has just gotten so bad and I think it is affecting my stamping and my mood and also my ability to be on time because I have to like find stuff under all the clutter. So, all right, Cindy says, my craft area is a big sty made a batch of 40 cards trying to decide what to make for Christmas. Plus, I'm going to South Carolina to see my mom family at Thanksgiving. Oh, that's so much fun. I'm glad some of you are traveling for Thanksgiving. Um, I'm not sure what we're going to do for Thanksgiving. We celebrated the Canadian Thanksgiving and it's just going to be my husband and I. And I I have no clue. I, I don't even know what I'm, I'm going to make for Thanksgiving, but you know, I already kind of celebrated it. So I don't feel like I'm missing out. Um, just wanted to point out before I go any further, I, I do have a supply list. It is in the description below and it is also on my blog and on my blog are the instructions to make this swing card, like the written instructions. And I'm also, if I have time, I will pop in um, the video link. I did a swing card, um, I think it was in 2018. And I think I did a really good job of explaining how to do it. And I did little post-it notes, I think on the, the ruler of the card. So I think it was um, a little better explained. So if you want to make this card, um, you could probably follow along that video. It will be a little bit more concise than this one was. Um, let me just see. Um, oh yes. And I should mention, um, if you place an order with me, you always get rewarded. Um, $15 um, gets you a tutorial. And um, if you spend $50, you get my host code gift of the month. And um, that you will also get the tutorial if you spend 50. So you get both. And um, this month, do I have it? Yes, I do. Oh, rolling over here. It's 
never by my desk. Um, we will be getting a sampler pack of the beautiful um, foil, not foil sheets, um, glimmer paper that I have retired glimmer paper in many different colors. Um, this is just one sampler. I've All of them are like different because I had different packs. I'm just gonna spread this out. So this is one of the, the packs. So I can't tell you which pack you're gonna be getting. There's gonna be a bunch of different ones, but this is one. These are really great. What I find I use my glimmer paper for is accents on my Christmas cards, like little punched shapes and stuff. So sometimes you don't need a lot of it. You just kind of need like a little pop. And that's what um, glimmer paper is really nice for. And it's nice to have a bunch of different colors to work with. So I hope you enjoy that host code gift. Now, I already had some orders this month. So thank you for everyone who's ordered. Um, okay, I'm going to move on to more comments. All right. Um, Cindy, I hope you have a great time with your family at Thanksgiving. And uh, good luck cleaning up that craft room. Ellie says, all of this sounds familiar later. If I add one more table, there will be no nowhere to walk. Still, I can't seem to sort things out. I know. It's crazy. I, I need to get in there and just, I need a garbage bag. I need to throw some things out. Um, I, yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Ellie. Ellie said the card was adorable. Oh, and I'll thank you, Elizabeth, for sharing my video. I appreciate that. And... Um, and Elizabeth also says very cute. Cindy liked the the card. She said it's very cute. And so did Linda. Thank you. Thank you, Janine. Um, Linda says her craft room is a pig pen. And I agree. It does change your mood. I know. Okay, so what are we going to do after we get off here? We are going to like spend a little time and clean up our, our rooms so that we feel better, I think. Okay, and Cindy asks, did you use thick white for the card base today? Yes, I did. Um, for smoothness, it would have been nice to use the regular basic white, but because it's a card base, I really feel like you need that thick um, white. Previously, I did this card with some designer paper that was a thick designer series paper. It wasn't like our regular one. But I really feel like it needs to be, it needs to be like the regular thickness, like a, a thick um, weight for, for the card base. And I think you'll be happier if you use the, the thick, the thin, um, the regular is nice. Actually, I use the regular on my layers because it's, um, it, it stamps nicer and it, the blends um, are, are nicer on the regular basic white, but the thick basic white for the card base. That's a good question, Cindy, thank you. All right, guys, well, I hope you have a great week and get those craft rooms cleaned up. I will be um, on YouTube on Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern with a, um, either it will be a fancy fold or it will be a 3D item. And uh, so I hope um, to see you then. Have a great week, until then, take care, bye-bye.